Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Talk Phys Ed, the show where we get to know some of the most influential physical education and health education people from around the world. I am your host, Jason Steele. With me, as always, Tanner Rose. Hey, Jason. This has been the episode that I've been looking to are looking forward to for such a long time. Uh, it's going to be our field day episode. And wouldn't you know it, for most schools, we're not having in-person field day. So it's a little bit backwards, a little bit different, but uh, I've been looking forward to it, so we're going to still do the same episode. So why don't yeah, you introduce the yeah. guest? Yeah, we've been talking about, about doing this for a while um, and, and talking field day because it's one of those things where many – uh, physical education teachers look forward to this and students look forward to it and teachers um, all year long and uh, it just so happens that now we we get around to recording it and field day is looks vastly different now than than what it will uh, look like or th what it has looked like in the past and uh, hopefully in the future and so um, we're going to talk to uh, Kelly Brown and Drew Burris tonight about some field day things, and we're excited to have them on the show. Uh, Drew, how are you doing today? I'm good. Yourself? How are you guys? Doing okay. Doing okay. Excited that you're here and, and glad you can make it. And uh, you for me. Kelly, how yes. goes it? It is going fantastic. Well, it's gotten a lot better since this first started. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. We, we've had a few uh, shows this week. We've, we've pumped out like three or four shows now in one week. We took about a month and a half off. Um, and now we've got like three or four that have come out in a week. And um, it's just, it doesn't matter if we're doing a show here on Zoom or if you're talking to someone anywhere. The only thing that always comes up is the coronavirus thing, right? Like if I don't hear the word COVID or coronavirus again in my life, yeah. I will be I will be super happy. But oh. um, we're kind of at a time now where it seems like some stuff is starting to happen and, and come back. Um, and yeah. so hopefully, you know, that's the, that's the pattern and we continue with that. But uh, for now, we'll jump into some questions for Let's Talk Phys Ed. You guys ready? I'm ready. Let's go. I, I can sense there's a little nervous energy, but <laughs> on her side, not mine. <laughs> we, we, haven't, we haven't forced anyone off the show yet. We haven't made anybody cry yet. Um, oh, we'll, that we'll, we'll, makes me feel better. We'll be somewhat nice here with the with with your question. <laughs> and Jason, I'll go with the first question since you're usually the one who scares the people off. So hey, I love hey. it. <laughs> so we'll, we'll go a little bit different. Um, you know, I'm not going to lie. I missed part of Kelly's uh, super early Shape Tampa field day uh, presentation. I walked into it at a normal person's time, like 8 o'clock. I think you started before 8. And it was – what I saw was amazing to the point that I was done for the rest of the day. I just had to sit and I had to talk to Kelly and find out, you know, more about what's happening there. Can you tell us maybe some of the unique things that your school does for those people who couldn't attend um, that makes field day so special at your school? Um, well, when we set up field day, it used to be, you know, your traditional where the, you had the students rotated with their classes and they, the teachers were there with them and they ran the games or whatever. And it just got to where I started noticing the kids weren't, able to mix up with each other with the rest of the with the rest of their grade level and so we started thinking of ways that we could do that other than just throwing it out there like a regular carnival which is another way that we've done it but we tend to make a big game and then they play activities within the game so we set ours up with a like a giant um it could be a big oval or a big circle. You could make it a big square, but all the stations are set up all the way around a soccer field. And then those, the kids at the stations are color coded. So they start for us, they start at one end of the field and we use a coin system where they're, they go and earn a coin at one end of the field. They pick a game and they earn a colored coin. That colored coin sends you to the other end of the field and that 
that's the color you go to. And there's three choices to choose from. So then once you drop off your coin and play at that game, you'll get another coin at that station that'll send you back to the other side. So basically you're switching back and forth and they're running, you know, 100 yards back and forth. <laughs> they have no idea how much they're actually running. Um, and so, but they're mixed up with different kids because you don't, you don't know who's coming there. So a lot of what we teach during the year is you, you need to know everybody and you need to play with anybody. Right. You know, Absolutely. so that's basically the, the overall setup for our field day that we've done for the last couple of years. And I love that idea. And I want to take that back to uh, my school. Last year, I did a field day just a couple of weeks after I got to see that. So I wasn't able to implement it. But this year, my plan was definitely to try to get some of those chips or some way to mark yeah. that you have completed something or you've earned something and you run back across. and that's just such an awesome idea that that's one of the biggest takeaways I had from Chip Tampo is that one simple idea. Yeah, yeah. And it's just simple enough that they, they don't really have to hold anything other than that coin. You know, it started out one year I did it and they were earning a coin on one side and spending it on the other. But then I started seeing kids saving coins and I wanted them to, it to be very random. And so, and the, the, you know, if you look at the statistics, they were going to get to everything, but you still had some choice within that. Sure. That's how I wanted that, but I wanted them not to be able to choose everything so specifically because they'll hang out at one station at field day. You find the best one with the water slide or whatever it is. Oh, yeah. They're yep. hanging there the whole time, you know, so I, and I'm also able to, switch my signs around if you start seeing things get a little bit where they've figured the system out then you just move all your station sign colors around and all of a sudden that color belongs to another coin now and yeah. they don't know that you've just done that that's a cool cool unique idea i, I like that and i think a lot of people uh when they listen to this and watch they'll that's be ready because yeah be getting in contact with that's people. awesome i have and i have it all spelled out and laid out with pictures and everything that's that's perfect cool <laughs> um drew talk about um kind of your planning process of field day from picking a theme to making sure that you have everything that you need uh take us through kind of how you prepare and how you get ready for field day well when i first started this I didn't really realize I was in charge eight years ago, and I asked my principal, and he said, yeah, you need to go ahead and set it up. So I used PE Central to kind of get a get-go on it. They had a Hawaiian theme on it, and that one went really well. The kids loved it. They hadn't seen anything like that before. And then I thought, well, let's spice it up for next year. Let's put a little bit more of a theme into it. So we did Save the City, and then it got bigger and bigger, bigger. And the way I usually do it is I go off themes that probably popular so we did ninja turtles we did super field day world which was probably the biggest one i've done we did all levels uh from mario for each station uh, they got like question block prizes at the end of it so usually whatever's coming out that's popular is what i'll pick for the students um i'm not running ideas i usually go to uh, missouri state convention every year in november and show the ideas off and I keep adding more ideas for people to look at, and I, I think I'm set to I retire. So. Oh, that's awesome. That oh, nice. should be all right, especially wow. now since wow. I had to push. We were supposed to do the Disney one for this year, and I was kind of, me, I know me and Kelly were kind of hoping, like, well, maybe we'll get yeah. still going in there, you know. That's, we, we were, and we forth. were. And I thought, well, it's not probably going to happen, so I unveiled a new theme that's going to help them at home, and we said we'll push Disney back the next year and then the year that was the one that was supposed to come out for two years gets pushed back a little bit more so right. we're ready for two more years of this so but if, no but if we really really want to we can probably make it happen we'll make an appearance you can do like a let's talk phys ed theme yeah oh yeah the kids would yeah. love that we would love it they probably will watch the show I mean, no, I, the theme is what drives field day 
It is yeah. what I, it, but like, that's how we've always when done. I was, when I was in school, I think we there wasn't nothing. It was like you know the original thing of tug of war. And, yeah. Uh, just relay, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I thought you know maybe I can just put a little bit of the spice into it, and it's it's caught on. I mean, people love it, and I started making uh, field day forecasts, so it gave kids an idea of what was going to be the weather like the day before, which. It's funny. I can't stop from laughing when I make them. I've got one coming up for Thursday. And then I thought, well, I can get a little bit more into it and make trailers to kind of give them a preview. So what I did was on the last day of school when they did their assembly, I would show them a video about eight minutes of, well, here's a kind of a little sneak peek of what's going on for next year. And they love that. And it's fun making too. Wow. That's awesome. Cool. I've yeah. seen those uh, those weather reports that you did. I remember seeing them last year and just thinking that is an amazing tool just to get it the kids to think about it. <laughs> Wait till Thursday. Uh, no. That is an awesome idea. I, I need to do that where I start to get them pumped up. And I usually do it just me and my pair pro. Oh. We work, you know, we pump it up and it's, the kids are packed with their bags two weeks ahead of time and they've got it hanging on the bedpost like I told them. And, you know, you could sell them a cup of dirt for $5 and they would buy it. You know? yeah. <laughs> now, you just mentioned your para. So I'm thinking about how much of a control freak I am. And I want to have my hand in every single part. And I want to make sure it's my way. And, you know, at some point you realize that's too big of a job. Like, I know Drew... He, like gets up at midnight and oh, no, no, he no, starts no, no, working no. at midnight. No, and no, no, no. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, how much of a control freak are you in regards to that? How much do you give up to your volunteers? Because the volunteers are a ginormous part of the success. So, are you asking me? Yeah, either no, one no, of no. you. How much okay. of a control okay. freak you go are first, you? Kelly. You go first, Kelly. So I stopped using volunteers um, probably several years ago because the volunteers were usually parents, and they stopped wanting to do that. They want to walk around with their kids. It's like they have come to Disney World, and they want to go to the stations. I mean, once they had to start running back and forth across the field, it became, they were like, what kind of a field day is this, you know? And I'd, I'm kind of like, well, it's not really for you. It's for them, and they've worked all year for it. But so I'm lucky enough to have, I have a para that works with me all the time. She is the other half of my brain. She is the, she cool. is the, guts of all of it when I'm all over the map with my ideas and I'm trying to put stuff out there she's the organizer she's made sure that there's exactly the right amount of equipment it's all labeled she is that person I mean I I couldn't ask for a better one but I also during field day that day I have always gotten every non-homeroom teacher is excused from their position that day and they are my field day station attendees or whatever you want to call them. They run all the stations all day long. So I teach at a K through two school. So kindergarten, we have 11 kindergarten classes. So wow. I have a, at wow. least 11 kindergarten para pros out there running the games. <laughs> then you have all the EIP para pros and your, you know, the other para pros that, and they all, then I have my, the speech teacher and all the other specials, all of those are out there. So I've got about 30, 40 people that are at my disposal to run these stations. And that way, if somebody's gonna be absent or whatever, but I know who's gonna be there. The thing that made the teachers really, they got on, my, on board with this was when I told them that they didn't have to do anything. Their job, uh, yeah. <laughs> the classroom teacher's job is to bring a lawn chair and they're in charge of watching their kids' towels. And if their child needs them, they, they're to go to their teacher. So their teacher has to find a home base spot. They decorate it for the theme. They sit out in a lawn chair for two or three hours. And I am a superhero. I mean, uh, they, don't, they do nothing. Yeah. They just sit there and love every minute of it. 
So that's basically, that's, I mean, I'm lucky to have that because otherwise I don't know, I'd have to recruit the volunteers again, which got very difficult. How about you, Drew? Are you super controlling like me or are you, somebody yeah. who needs a lot yeah. of volunteers? Yeah. Uh, nope, nope. Um, I usually have everything set out the day, at, when school is over the day before, I have everything out. Now last year I started at I think 4.30 in the afternoon and I got done about three in the morning. And I mean, like I am very OCD on everything. Like it has to be yeah. how it is on paper. I know not everything looks good on paper, right? But you know, it had to be like you know my vision, my way. I mean, That's I right. want it to be where right. I think the kids are going to have fun. Now, mm -hmm. what I did was I had Sign Up Genius send out for parents that wanted to come out and help, and you know they walked around with their students with their, with their child, and that was fine. But I did have the special teachers go out and help. Just like Kelly said, I had the parents come out and help. I did have a lot of help, and I gave them, you know, maps of how this works out, and then the rules of how everything works out. And I would walk around and kind of supervise. And I was kind of in charge for the rotation, so depending on the theme, there would be a certain sound effect that go off that helped them rotate to the next one. So I'd have mm -hmm. someone else helping them go to the next one, making sure no one got lost. But yeah, right. I, I mean, I try to get it down to the T of what I have ready to go so yeah yeah that's what and i, I have had any rain so far I'm, I'm no. so far so, you know. so far so, so far so far yeah it's yeah. it's hard to let go of some of that control yeah. i will say that I, I mean as i've as i've gotten older and been there longer you know <clears throat> and my parapro is very good at you know she can talk me down off that control cliff sometimes you know she's like <laughs> hold on does this is this really a hill you want to die on, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So especially where some of the games are concerned, like Drew said, the, my vision of that game, well, at the end of the day, if the kids play it a little different, is that really a deal breaker? Because I, for, I had to let some of that go because I can't be at all the stations. So right. I really don't know – how it's go, you know, are the te are those para pros or whatever working it the way I wanted it to be? For the most part, they are, but yeah. but there's going to be a little variation, and I had to be okay with that. If because yeah, I, I, they're the ones that are working it. What if that? What if my vision on paper didn't work out in the field? Well, I can't just say, "Well, game over." We're gonna. I guess I need to say congratulations to them for making it work so I didn't have to be over there and try to put that fire out, you know, cause I'm up at like, like he said, I, he can set his out the night before I can't. My pair and I are there at five 30 in the morning on field day and we're setting up with truck headlights trying to get everything. Now we did learn to paint the field the day before. So we'll spray paint right, the field down, you know, all of our station boxes. And when I learned that painting squares is a lot easier than painting circles, let me tell you, that was a game changer. You can play a game that goes across a square just as easy as you could play a game that goes across a circle. It's just very much easy, easier to draw the square, you know, and we do do different color squares all the way around the field so we know where that station belongs and what belongs. And then we truck all the equipment down, dump it into the square, and then we go around as people start coming to their stations, they're supposed to set their game up. And the games are real simple, so it's not like they have this major setup. You know, you dump a, swim, a baby pool and a bunch of junk that's going in the pool. Well, they know, fill the pool up and throw the junk in the pool. You know, yeah. it's, it's those kind of games. <laughs> right. Um, so keeping it with field day, what, give me uh, like your favorite. I want to hear both of you tell me your favorite field game ever. Favorite oh, field gosh. game. Gosh. Drew, let's hear from you. I got too many. Yeah. Um, we did the Lego field day a couple years ago. And what I did was I took, three inflatable pools, and I put them underneath um, our soccer goal. So the net was off, the jump ropes, and made them look like, like hanging ropes, they'd swing across, 
So there was rafts inside of the pool. So their job was to swing like Batman, Lego Batman, across from raft to raft. And I mean, I wanted to do it. That one took me probably 45 minutes to get set up because I did it while it was raining. Oh my and gosh. Get, and like I do, I do like recap videos uh, and it's on my website that, that shows like their day. And these kids going across it, the kindergartners, when they got done, they went back to class, their teacher asked them to draw what their favorite one that they went through and they drew the Batman symbol. And I mean, it took a while, but it was so worth setting up. For cool. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, oh, that's that. cool. Wow. How about you? Um, I have to say, um, there's so many, like Drew said. Uh, last year, we did a movie thing. It was a movie, like cinema and, you know, that kind of thing. Actors and actresses and movies and things like that. And one of our stations out there was walking the red carpet. And we spray painted the grass with the red carpet. And then we set up this big... I had these tarps that I pa that I painted one of those backgrounds, the backdrops where you dance your way down the red carpet and then you stand and pose in front of that stage right there. I had dress up clothes all on tubs and they could put on jewelry. They had on rings and watches and ties, everything that came from dollar store. And then, you know, those scarves that we juggle with, they tucked those down into their clothes. The little girls made skirts out of them. And, they, and then they wore sunglasses. Then they had to do their favorite dance. And we had a camera on them that videotaped every one of them as they walked that red carpet and they did a pose. Oh my God, it was awesome. That was probably one of my favorite ones. That sounds really cool. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Now on the flip like side of that, uh, on the flip side of that, there's got to be something on field day that has been a total disaster. I know my example last year, uh, we did a volleyball one. I brought out some volleyball standards. I got these the big, like, slow volleyball trainers. And when I inflated the first one, it, it was dead. So I went out and got another one. By the time I got to the third one, every one of my volleyball trainers was flat. So oh, I was like, man. I don't know, a yoga ball. And then I just, I had to move on. So it was just a terrible station. What's kind your of, nightmare? Kind of like uh, when one of our field day stations is Mr. Steele brings his cooler and we have freezy pops and they're not. Yeah. Frozen. Mm, they're not oh. frozen. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Or <laughs> Mr. Steele grills hot dogs for lunch on field day <laughs> and he doesn't have propane in his grill when he brings it. <laughs> That's always fun when you have to run to the store real quick and do that. Um, Those are my two. But. <laughs> Drew, anything? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I learned my lesson with inflatable pools a couple years ago, not to put them out too early because I had them exactly where I wanted them. And then with the grass being so dewy and them sitting out there for an hour or two and then being deflated, then you have to go in and inflate them. And that takes longer than filling them back up. That just yeah. Oh, so, what a mess. I think mess. the last one to throw out. So. Yeah. Yeah. Take a while. Yeah. Did uh, they even blow away? Or no, they didn't. Right they, away? No, they, they, I, I was ready to go. I was eager. I had everything ready, and I had to restart it. So. <laughs> so one of our field dates formats that we've done, we played the game that I learned from. Um. I learned it from somebody that lives here in Georgia. It was the, the card game where you match up the cards. So like I had a huge circle in the middle of the field with cards, you like playing cards all over the ground and we called it match madness. So every kid would draw a card and then they would hold it up and scream their number because they had to find somebody that matched them and that was their partner for the game and the and the color on their to, or the number told you what game to go to so that was another format well if it's a windy day all my cards blew all over i mean they were everywhere we were and the grass was wet so then the cards got wet it was a nightmare yeah. You had to put oh. stuff on top of the cards, and then the kids wouldn't put them back under there, and so they would blow away, 
<laughs> that just got, I mean, it was terrible. I switched off from cards after that because that was a big <laughs> night. That's when I started saving uh, like plastic lids from like butter and yogurts and peanut butter, you know, those kind of lids. Sure. And I wrote numbers on all of those and we tossed those out in the middle because they were a little bit heavier, especially like the peanut butter lids and stuff like that. They'll, they stayed on the ground. And then the kids just walked around with their lids screaming the number. And, you know, it sounds like a bunch of braying sheep out there and they're all going three, 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 you know, but they, but it was a good way to mix kids up. That's another very popular format that we've done. That's a good idea too, man. I, I have a feeling that you're going to have a lot of uh, people getting in contact with you uh, <laughs> after, after this show blows up on YouTube and Twitter. Oh. Um, so what was field day like when you were younger? Uh-uh. See Drew shaking your head as uh-huh. in like you didn't do one or you don't remember. Oh, no, we did. We did one. It was, it was basically what I was talking about earlier. It was the same thing every year. Uh, it was. It's what tug of war, relay races, uh, potato sack races. Like I do not really recall water being involved. Me either. Was, Me either. Uh, I don't know. It just that. I mean, that's that was the whole point of me putting themes in with this is kind of to make it fun, something that was relatable to the kids. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. usually do like prize drawings at the end of it. So like if a theme was coming out that was getting really popular, you know, the stores would be packed with prizes. And we do drawings at the end for students to get the prizes. So I made it a little bit funner than what I had it when I was little. So, I mean, right. it's all for the students. I get up really, well, I'm out all day for about 36 hours. It seems like yeah. at the end of the day. But it's all for the kids. And I, I say that every year when I do my presentation. It has nothing to do with me. It's the last full day of school is when we do it. And I want the students to have a great time. And it's their day. It is. It is. And I look at it as the final culmination of everything we've taught all year long. I mean, you would not, I mean, I think about what's happened with this virus and us, the kids not getting to do this. They, they were not going to be ready. I mean, I, I can't even imagine we weren't done yet. So, you know, you think by the end of the year for field day, everything that you're teaching them is getting them ready to send them out into the middle of it all. Cause my kindergarten teachers at the first time I did that, they're like, there's not a fence. How are you going to keep them in? What you're just going to let them loose. I said, where are they going? Like they're a bunch of wild animals. Or yeah. Something. I said, yeah. Where, yeah, where are they going to go? They're going to go where the fun is. Right. And, and I've got that. I've got them, you know, the th- that's what Drew said. The the games are enticing enough, and they that is not what I recall. You know, he said the tug of war and you know egg in the spoon or whatever your traditional oh, yeah. games. I don't even. I very vaguely remember a field day because it did not stick out in my head at all as anything special. And I, that is not what I wanted. I wanted this to be something that they could not wait for. And they remembered it and they tell their siblings about it. And it becomes this huge undercurrent, you know, in mm-hmm. the spring. And that's I just, a holiday. it is, it absolutely mm-hmm. is. So, I mean, I, it's, if it's, if I would, would remember anything, it would be tug of war. Like he said, that's probably your number one. And I don't even do tug of war during field day. Yeah. Yeah. The thing I remember is we would put our shoe on the end of our foot and we'd kick our shoe and see how far it could go. Yep. And then you'd have, you know, the champion shoe kicker. Well, uh, there was one kid who was a little bit better than everybody else and he didn't get a shoe back until the end of the day because uh, it was on the roof. But <laughs> well, and maybe that was intentional. Maybe our teachers put it just close enough to the building that that might yeah. happen. So in other words, Tanner had to walk around the whole field day with one shoe is what he's saying. He, he Oh, my the, God. It was <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Uh. <laughs> well, we've got these awesome memories of field day. And, Drew, I was, um, I was kind of teasing you on Twitter when you said that you had your uh, 
uh, 2022 video already made. And yeah. I said, hey, you can show it on our show as the world uh, premiere because that would awesome. be awesome. Yeah, now, it would be. If you want, you can do a, a screen share and share that. If not, when you're ready, uh, just tag us at Let's Talk Phys Ed uh, and everybody will get to check it out that way. But I'm excited to see it, whether it's today or another day. Listen, we've had we've had birthday announcements on here, pregnancy <laughs> announcements on here, retirement retirement announcements on here. I mean, we could have a world premiere. I I, I, I have no problem. It's eight minutes though. That's how long the trailer is. Well, I don't know if we have eight minutes. <laughs> Can how we? About see, see? How about we get a sneak peek of it? Yeah. Uh, give us, give us like thirty seconds of it, and then um, if you want to, we can we can share it when we post the. Oh, I want to see. You can just tag us. So you like a picture? You want me to that, tag you? I can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can yeah. do that for you. Yeah. I can do that for you. Okay. All right. I That's hope awesome. somebody's going to well, show me how to do this kind of stuff. <laughs> so. Watch the weather um, report Thursday. It'll be I good. will. I will. <laughs> um, you know, we we were uh, super excited to have you guys on because obviously, I mean, it's like field day is a huge deal, um, and you guys hit it. Both of you touched on it. It's not about you. It's not about mm -hmm. us. It's about the kids. Um, and you've clearly become experts in this in this area. Is the field day? I mean. You guys both present on it. Um, you know, you're you're on episode. What are we on, Tanner? Fifty two. Uh, Fifty two. Fifty two. Let's talk phys ed. Um, and so we thank you so much for for being on the show and talking field day with us. And can't wait to see that world premiere. I know. It's gonna be exciting. Um, but. Uh, any more or any way that anybody can get in touch with you. You know, we talked about it a little bit too. I mean, you both threw out amazing ideas. So there's, there's bound to be some people who are going to want to get in touch with you and in contact sure. with you about how you do it. So if you could uh, tell everybody how to get in touch with you, the easiest way, um, aside from giving cell phone and address, I suppose, <laughs> uh, but um, you know, you know, your Twitter handle, if you have a, a website or anything like that, how can our viewers get in touch with you? Go ahead, Kelly. Um, so I have a Twitter handle at love primary PE. Um, and then you can email me at Kelly dot Brown at Morgan dot K 12 dot G A dot U S. All right. Drew? I've got uh, Twitter's at Project Phys Ed, and then my website, uh, projectphyseded.weebly.com. There's a whole section for field day, every single one I've done, because uh, I take the theme and I put it into the classroom as well, so it's not just a day, it's a year-long thing. So everything that I've done for lessons and whiteboards and pro or projector activities, it's all on there. That's awesome. Perfect. Well, um, you know, people from around the world watch our show. Uh, and so uh, be, be prepared, be ready. People are going to get in touch with you and they're going to have questions. So uh, uh, thank you again for, for being on our show and joining um, us. Oh, uh, thank you. Can't yep. wait until all of this whole situation is over and uh, we can all meet yes. up and uh, talk more people. <laughs> In person. And have a real field day. <laughs> yes. Um, as Thanks always, for having us. Yep. And as yeah, always, thank you. thank you for watching and, and for you two joining us this evening. I'm your host, Jason Steele, and we will see you next time. See you yeah. later. Bye. Bye.